All right, so what we're gonna do now is do a little demo on how to take a packaging design such as this and place it on, um, on a uh, 3D model. So the first step is to go ahead and open this up in, um, well, actually, I think I can maybe even just edit here, but we wanna make sure that the image size is square and it should be 512 by 512, or well, probably 1080 by 1080. So we do square, and yeah, it's gonna kind of crop it off a little bit. So try to move it. So we've got all of it in the scene there. And then uh, save a copy. Uh, I'll put it up just on my desktop for now. Save. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead on my desktop. I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop just to make sure um, that I can change the image size. I always like to keep uh, images that I'm using for materials in a uh, factor of two um, so that it is capable of being uh, better used as a resource in programs like Unreal Engine and Blender. Typically, all materials will be on a square um, and depending on how big they are, the resolution will kind of adjust to that. So right now I've got this at 1214 by 1214 with a 144 resolution. I'm gonna go ahead and do 2080 by 2080. Um, and I'll just lower this resolution down. Uh, 2080, 2080, okay. Strike that, that was the wrong number. We went 2048 by 2048, so that's the power of two. And what that basically means is if I divide 2048 divided by 2, I get 1024 divided by 2, I get 512 divided by 2, 256 divided by 2, 128 divided by 2, 64 divided by 2, 32 divided by 2, 16 divided by 2, all the way down to 2. And the reason for that is it, um, it allows the material to scale with what's called a MIP map in um, game design software. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. Um, just save this and close it. All right, so back over here to Rhino. Um, I'm gonna design the box real quick. So I'm not using any specific measurements. So, um, you know, it, it, it's gonna be a little bit um, up to you kind of how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna draw a box and it's a little thin and high, I think. So this is kind of the what the packaging could look like, if you will. This is very simple, but I think that you can expand on this in your own, on your own to figure out you know, uh, more complicated things to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so to apply the material, first thing we do is we select the object and we are in our properties window, which is this little thing right here. And then right here is our UV texture mapping. And I'm gonna pull up this right here. When I click on that, you can see um, this is the UV for uh, for the object. And if I select part of it, you can see which parts belong where. Um, and you can control how this looks too. So by default, this is a box, which makes it really su super simple, right? So you've got the all around the outside and then the top pieces right here. Um, what you can do to kind of tweak it is like if I wanted to, I could set the seams where things divide. I would probably just use these very similar to that. Um, so the default one came in pretty nice. So clicking here and then this right here where you unwrap the package is what we'll use to create the seams. So when I select, select that, I've got my mapping channel. I'm going to select one, enter, and then I'm going to create seams. Um, and, you know, I might create all of them as separate seams so that I can move them around independently. So this is where the map is going to kind of break up. All right. So now that all of those will be separate panels in our UV map. So I hit enter and then that pops up there. And then you can see this is our map. Okay. Now we'll take our image. Uh, which is on my desktop right here. And this has no material applied to it now, so I can actually just drag and drop this onto the object. 
and you'll see how it's laid out on the object there. If I, um, let me go ahead and pull this over here like that. Uh, well, no. Okay, so let me put it into uh, rendered view here so you can see better. So yeah, the, the material's on there, but it's just not accurate, right? So now I can come back over here and edit my UV map to make it work better. So I can actually move these around. I can scale them down. So if I hit shift and use the little squares on there, I can scale this down. So this is the back, right? So I'll put this like right here. You can see how it's aligning better. Okay, and then I can just use um, you know, just the ind independent scale pieces here. Um, so like, I wanna make it narrower to fit, just like that, just like that, like that. And then we can see um, it's not facing the right direction, so I can flip this over 45 degrees. Whoops, not 45, I meant 90. <laughs> so undo that, flip this 90 degrees, 980, <laughs> control Z, 90 degrees. There we go. Now it's laid out pretty well on the back there. And then I can do like the side pieces and stuff. I can just move these out of the way too for now, just to get them out of my space while I'm laying things out here. All right, let me just move all this stuff around here. Okay, so then this piece right here, um, I imagine the front. Oh, I see. So this actually is the side too. So let me go ahead and make this narrower here. All right, scaling it in. So you kind of want to know the box dimensions that you're dealing with and how it fits onto the object when you design that actual model of the box, which I did not do. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to bring this one down here, scale it down. It's basically just a black panel, so I can just take any part of this. That looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to rotate this guy here. Oh, actually, let's pull this one right here, down here. So again, I got to rotate this and then maybe make it 180. There you go. And which one's this one? That's the top. Oh no, that's that side. Oh, it looks like we might actually this might be off the wrong size. So I'm just trying to figure out what this package is supposed to look like at this point still. All right, scale this down. Rotating it. Okay. So yeah, I, I think that this whole box is actually kind of supposed to be a little bit squishier here. Whoops. A little bit narrower, but you can, you get the, the idea of it, right? So this is now the bottom, which probably, let's see. Imagine the bottom is just the black, right?
Okay, so yeah, that's basically how you do it is you, you just edit the PV, uh, the, the UV map to match the, the style that you're trying to go for, um, you know. So this is a UV map for it. Once that's all done, um, you can just close it and you've got your labeling all laid out just right, um, ready for your rendering. And of course, um, rendering settings, I always like to kind of uh, make things look a little cooler. So um, I've got my render panel right here. If you don't have that, um, you can add it through show panels or right here um, and rendering panels right there. So I click on this on the right. Uh, my quality, I'm always gonna bump that up a little bit more. Um, four, three, this size right there is good. If you're rendering with a uh, computer that doesn't have a good graphics processor, you wanna leave it in draft quality. I usually do um, good or final quality. Uh, I'll add a 360 degree studio environment. So you get some studio lights in the background. Um, I like to use a uh, studio environment for, for my reflections as well. My ground plane, I like to use a material. I'll click here to assign a material. I'll bring in a new material. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you got to think like, maybe I want wood, maybe I want plastic. I want something that's kind of shiny and reflective, but I'm going to actually go to more types and import. And then I'm going to go to wood. And I always like to use this polished African teak. Gives it a nice, like, like it's on a desk or something. I mean, you can use any material you want here, but this is just kind of an example. Um, and then we'll, uh, come down here to a couple other settings. Okay, everything looks good. I think that those are gonna be the settings I'm gonna use. Um, and then I always like to also set a uh, bit of a blur here too. So I'll switch back up to properties here, or actually click out of properties. So you're no nothing is selected, but the properties windows open, you get this right here, focal blur. I click on that, I turn it on, um, and then I pick my points. So what you want to be in focus, you click on this here to there, and there to there. So I just want that front to be in focus. And if you have multiple objects here, you'll also uh, want to play with that a little bit more too. Well, let me do that again one more time. If you zoom in and out, it also does change the focal blur. So you got to reset this every time and you won't see it here. You'll only see it when you render. So if I switch this to ray traced view, you'll see that background blur is really nice. It kind of uh, makes that gradient, um, uh, in the background work a little bit better. I might even switch out my studio background um, with just a, a, a gradient, keep the reflections the same. Um, and I can change the colors of my gradient here too as well. So um, I'll do a color picker and you know, we got that pink there. I might do like a subdued light green or something. And then okay. Mm, solid color maybe. Oops. You, you see, you can kind of play with the, the background colors as well. Now, so um, then when you're ready, all you gotta do is type render and hit enter and it'll pop up a new window that um, is gonna do a whole ray traced version of it right here. And then you wait for that to be done. And once it's done, the save right here will come uh, back to life. So you can save it. And that's basically all there is to it. All right, so that's all done. Um, and this is our, our example here. So yeah, you can see that is the final rendered version. I can go ahead and hit save and it's ready to go. So hopefully you found this informative and it will help you with laying out your packaging design on your package. Thank you very much.